Shalom. Um, my name is Mayao Pinya. Also go by the name Tommy Kurt Todd. But my legal name is um, Kurtzy Todd. I am the youngest of Harry J. Todd, a blessed memory, and my mother, Sarah Todd. I am the youngest of seven kids. Um, I am what you would say, I was a product of the military. My father did 20 years in the Air Force and 20 years in the Navy. I had three brothers to serve in the armed forces. I myself even served in the armed forces. I served in the Marine Corps. So that is a quick background of myself. So I feel that I have definitely earned the right based off of my pedigree, so to speak, to speak as freely as I do and since it is my rights as a citizen to do so, I shall and do not bite my tongue in doing it. But I will not be disrespectful to the people that I dialogue with. Not intentionally. Now what I say might might take it as disrespectful, but I will never say anything to disrespect you because we know when we're downright deliberately trying to disrespect someone. And I, and I do not do that. So if I say something that rubs you the wrong way, it rubs you the wrong way. I'm not setting out to intentionally rub you the wrong way. My goal and my desire is to speak my mind. And since I have the constitutional right to do so, that shall I do. Some people will agree with what I have to say and others will not. And as they say, that's the beauty about this country. Everybody has freedom of speech. They could choose to believe what they want or disagree with whatever they want. So it, it doesn't offend me if you disagree and it doesn't make my heart elated with joy if you agree with me. You agree, you disagree. I, I feel good when I speak my mind and share what I, I want to share. So I'm at a high whenever I get to speak my mind. So I, I do not need your assistance to get a high. So you can disagree, you can agree. And that's your right. But what I want to speak upon is what everybody's been speaking upon for the last few weeks. It's been the hot topic ever since this um, young man decided that he was not going to stand for the national anthem. It literally, <laughs> you know, blew people's mind. It, um, <laughs> You know, it, it almost as you know, as some people say, you know, the the America turned upside down when this young man had the nerve to be so disrespectful to the flag in this great country and completely overlooked what the young man said he was protesting about, and equally as so, what he was not protesting against. He plainly stated that this had nothing to do about the military, which he has great respect for, and he has family members and friends as well that are in the military. And what he was doing was no slight against them. He plainly stated that he is protesting against rogue cops, bad cops, corrupt police officers that are not held accountable when they do 
wickedness, when they get away with murder, and they get paid vacations for doing it. That is plainly what he said he was protesting against. The um, the unequality of this nation. That is what he was protesting about. He wasn't protesting against all police officers that people quickly spend it into. They quickly spend his protest into being disrespectful to the military and disrespecting all cops. That is what the media and some of you spend it into. Instead of listening to what he actually said, he was indeed protesting. As I said before, I am a veteran. I have no problem with him doing what he is doing. Not at all. When I first heard about it, I was like, good for him. It didn't rub me no wrong way, period. Because as people love to say for the military, we fight for your rights. So if the military is out there fighting for your rights, and this brother apply his rights, do something with his within his constitutional right, his First Amendment right to do, and America get into an uproar about it and act like he did something unconstitutional, act like he did something that was anti-American. Wow. <laughs> it's mind boggling. But that is what um, corporate America do because America is a business. They are for you when you are for them. When you echo what they want to say, they're for you. They love you. As long as you submit to them. As long as you agree with what they want you to agree to. America and her proud, patriotic citizens have no problem with you. But as soon as you say something against America, as soon as you protest or voice your opinion, which we have the right to do as American citizens, all of a sudden now America has a problem when you do something that is plainly within the Constitution that you have the right to do. And it also is amazing if you are a person of color and do it. Now we had we had people in the 50s and 60s burning American flags, mainly Caucasians. Yeah, it was somewhat of an outcry, but a large majority of them was cheering it, was loving it. They had the right to do it. And you talk about your veterans that you love so much. When people came back from Vietnam and all that, you called them baby killers. You called them murderers. You called them all sorts of names. But yet you respect your veterans so much and you love them so much. And you quickly forget how you treated your vet veterans then and even how you treat them today. But you love them so much. You respect them so much. Yet they're they're homeless. Jobless. Shit, I can even testify to that one right there. I am a veteran. And even though veterans are supposed to have like first dibs on jobs and get their name rushed to the pile of the list, I'm still unemployed and I'm an unemployed veteran. So there you go again for your little saying about how much America love and take care of her veterans. Because she does not. So let's just be honest and truthful about um, events that go on here in America. Let's, let's just be for real about the current conditions of America. America, on my this is my opinion, and I have the right to speak my mind. America is as racist as she's always been. A lot of people don't wear the hood anymore, even though some people do. But there's many ways to show your racism. 
many ways. I do not have to, it don't have to always be done by riding up on a horse in a hood and burning a cross and coming to you at night and pulling you out of your house and stringing you up upon a tree and lynching you. Even though they still do it this very day. They might leave out the horses, depending on your location. But we still have young black men being found lynched, hanged to trees. But we have a black president now. So racism is officially over. And some person said that the night um, President Obama won his first term, somebody said, oh, I'm so glad this happened. Now we can finally put all this racist talk behind us because we have a black president. But guess what, America? We're going almost on eight years. America has revealed through President Obama's terms just how racist she really is and have always been. Putting a black man in office do not conceal racism. It actually exposed it to a high degree. And I know many of you American citizens that are of my hue or maybe of an even lighter hue opposite of me will agree or disagree. And as I said before, you have the right to do so. You have the right to do so. But I also have the right to keep speaking and that I shall. So let me get back to this protest of this young man. Um, Colin Kaepernick or Kaepernick, however you pr pronounce his name. I don't mean no disrespect by um, mispronouncing his name if I am. I always had a hard time with the brother's name. But the brother decided that he was going to stand with those that he feel that he feels are being oppressed in America. That he feel are being murdered, are being slaughtered upon the streets of America. It's his protest. And he eloquently voiced on um, why he was doing such. He answered the questions that the media posed to him. And he did it with um, maturity and to me a lot of dignity. And they, 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 his answers were very easy to comprehend and understand. But yet for some reason still people are screaming about how his protest is against the military and against all cops when he plainly stated with proper English that that is not the cause. But still, people are giving him death threats for being patriotic, standing up for his rights that the military fought for, giving him death threats because he will not rise and stand and give respect to an anthem that this country as a whole does not reflect. Just be honest, it doesn't. Now for some of you that enjoy how your life is, you have the wealth, everything goes your way, you have nothing to complain about. So of course you do not feel oppression. So therefore, you want America to stay as it is in regards to how you are experiencing her. But there are many others that do not experience this great America that you talk about. There are many that think this place is very oppressive. There are many that have tales of America that is different from yours. There are many people that have run in with police officers and their accounts weren't as smooth as yours. I never knew that you was the standard bearer of every police encounter just because the cops showed you much respect and your encounter with them was very pleasant and you went on about your way and you was able to go home to your family. But there are some people that have encounters with police officers off routine situations. They don't get to go home. There are people that get pulled over for busted taillights and end up in a body bag. 
from busted taillights. There are people that have been shot dead from jogging. But for some reason, these cops have the grand old excuse of I felt threatened. Um, the, one of the weirdest things I heard was one cop said that the person was walking aggressively. But the person was walking aggressively into a restaurant. The cop followed him in and harassed him. But he told on his police report, he said the, the, the black man was walking too aggressively and it made him feel uncomfortable. But this officer followed this man into the store and harassed him. So everybody do not have the same pleasant experience that you may have. I have experience with police officers. I had some that was pleasant and I had some that wasn't so um, pleasant. I never had a gun drew on me, but I have had some interactions with, um, I felt they weren't very professional and I had some experience when they was very professional with me. I have been surrounded by at least eight cops and had about four um, police officers around my car. And this was, shoot, almost, almost 20 years ago. And I was not terrified. I was not scared for my life having all them officers around. I wasn't. I thought it was a little bit overboard, but not one time did I think that my life was in jeopardy. But let that same same thing happen today and it will be a totally different experience for me to be surrounded by that many officers. And they even brought out um, um, the dogs, a, a, a dog, a drug sniffing dog. And I was it, it, it didn't it didn't bug me. I thought it was overkill, but it didn't bug me. I was not scared for my life. But if that event honestly happened today, I probably will be scared senseless. I'll probably be seeing my life flash before my eyes. And that is simply because you don't know what a good cop looked like. What do a good cop look like? You normally don't know he's a good cop, so to speak, until after the um, the encounter is over. But when them sirens flash and they tell you to pull over and they step out of that vehicle and they approach yours with their hand already on their gun or their gun or their gun already drawn. What do you think that person on the other end? of that experience is actually thinking. Most of all, they're a person of color. What do you think they're thinking? They could be thinking, this is it for me. I'm done. I'm a goner over this because, because I got suspended license, because I didn't come to a complete stop at this stop sign. My life is going to be taken for this. What racist cop is this? And you just keep it real. We got experiences with Caucasian cops in black communities that are completely ridiculous. It's nothing but racial profiling. I just like to call it racism. Because as a, as a black man, I can't walk down the street and go to the store without looking suspicious. And I'm not one of them brothers that walk outside with my rear end hanging out. I don't go walking down the street with my pants below my buttocks and no shirt on and walking down the street. I don't do that. Because to me, that just brings attention to yourself. And we don't need any help bringing attention to ourselves in a negative way. That's just my opinion. But for some reason, I look suspicious walking down the street or I provoke fear somehow to this police officer. So now the closer I get, 
he is getting terrified the closer I get. I heard one police officer say of one person that was shot 16 times by a police officer and the person um, was armed with a knife, but the person was not even going towards the cop. He was actually walking away from the cop. And he said he had eyes. He, he stared with eyes from 50 yards away. What in the hell does that mean? Does that mean I, I better kill him? Because he got 50 yard eyes. I never knew now if I if my eyes looked a certain way, that was a death sentence. I never knew walking aggressively was a death sentence. Jogging, trying to run and catch the bus is a death sentence. Now, I'm going to let you, you know this perfectly. I am talking about the corruptions. I am talking about the wickedness that is done in America. I'm not talking about all cops. Let's make that perfectly clear. I am not talking about disrespecting the military or our veterans. Because I'm a veteran. I was in the military, so that don't make no sense. I am talking about the treatment that comes from this great nation towards her citizens. I am talking about the police corruption that seems to go unchecked. And many, and many times it does. So that's what I'm talking about. That is my complaint. My complaint is not all police officers. Um, my complaint is not that all Caucasians are racist. And they hate us and they're trying to they're trying to kill all black citizens. I believe it's the system in play that would love to do that. But I do not believe that all Caucasian people um, lean over that way. I don't. But I am speaking of those that do. And there are some people in this nation that know who them people are and still sit back quietly and say nothing. And they want everybody else to sit back quietly and say nothing. But for some reason, they get highly offended and fly into a complete rage when oppressed people speak out. Like how dare these black people want to come out from under this oppression and this systematic racism that this country have always done since her birth. This country was founded. Let's just be honest. It's in our history books. Let's just be honest. This country was founded off of corruption, murder, all sorts of broken covenants that this country and government made. So just, just, just keep it real. Just, just keep it real and be honest. And she have not strayed far from her roots. Period. So it is amazing to me when oppressed people, people that believe they are being mistreated, speak out. And for some reason, the oppressor is like, how dare you call us out on our oppressing you? You need to keep your mouth shut and know your place. You got a black president and you got a month to honor your history. So you should be happy and be quiet and know your role. That is some of the most ignorant things I've ever heard in my life. And one of the biggest ignorant things I've ever heard, the most racist comment you could tell somebody, if you don't like it here, you could leave. If you don't like it here, you could go on back to Africa. Yeah, if you don't like us talking about what we're talking about, you can go somewhere. You can go back somewhere. You go both ways. Because it's weird how one person is basically running his campaign talking about how bad America is. And a lot of people want to nominate him to represent their party as president. Then a black man say America is bad and they got areas they need fixing. And y'all go into a flying fit. 
because he's basically agreeing with another guy that America is bad and needs some needs some fixing. This place is so hypocritical, walking so much hypocrisy that is crazy. And that's just the bottom line of the truth. And we just need to deal with it. We just need to wake up. Walk over into that bathroom, wash our face off and take a nice, hard look in the mirror and examine our hearts. And we just be honest. That's all we got to do. Because I understand that there are some people that are experiencing oppression, hands down. But just because I'm not experiencing it, don't mean I can still speak out against it. I love hearing people talk about um, Colin. He makes millions of dollars. So since he makes millions of dollars, that means he do not post to speak out. Or join forces with people that he feel has no voice because they are oppressed. That means he don't post to want to help his fellow man. Which is one of the things people talk about. Oh, America is so so loving and helpful. When they see somebody down, they come and join with them and try to help them up. We say all that mess. But then when we do it, or it depends on who wants to do that, it's a big deal. But so since he makes millions of dollars, he should not open his mouth. He need to keep quiet. You're not oppressed. As I told a friend before, I did not know you had to be equally oppressed as well to speak against oppression that's just like me speaking out against um domestic violence well kurt you can't say anything about the, the you know domestic violence um, you, you never been on the receiving end that don't make any sense at all now i know most people are um that they, they, they join forces with groups like that because they have experienced it either personally or through um someone that they know but a lot of people join organizations of people that have been wronged people that are oppressed because in their heart they know it's wrong and they know with the platform they have they're in a better position for the message to be heard and this is all this brother did and plus he said it very very well he said how he said my conscience would not let me stand for an anthem that this nation is not living up to. And this was before. Now, I don't know if this brother knew about the third stanza. But now since this third stanza is known, and if y'all love this song so much, and it's a national treasure, why y'all take it out? Why are you not reciting and singing the whole thing? If you love this song so much, it's so so much a part of your, your heritage and your culture as being American citizens, recite it. Sing it. But most people don't want to do that. Most people didn't even know about it. And I, I for one, didn't know. I didn't know anything about it was a third stanza. And that third stanza celebrates the death of slaves. That for here's their crime that joined forces with a group that said they would give them freedom if they side with them. That was their great crime. So this person who offered it put a, vo a verse in about it. Like, where you at now? We're going to basically we're going to hunt you down. We're going to kill you. And now you're in the grave. You're dead. The, 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 the rain is washing your blood away because you got what you deserve trying to fight for freedom. How dare you want to fight for freedom? How dare you want to come up from under the thumb of oppression? You know, it's weird. Some so-called doctors and scientists back in the day said that Africans um, that um, African-American slaves suffered from a condition, from a sickness, from an illness. Uh, I, I forgot the name they gave it, but it was basically their sickness and their, their illness was they kept trying to run away and be free. Some slave owners 
Some so-called scientists and doctors say they suffered from a condition, from a mental illness, because they wanted to be free. Wow. And some people still think like that today. Like, how dare you speak against corruption? Now, you notice, speak against corruption. How dare you speak against laws that we have in play, but everybody is not experiencing that law to the fullest or rights to the fullest. Seems like others are and others are not. So this young man is simply saying, I will not rise within all these things that is going on. Police brutality. Um... Um, unequality. He said, this nation is not living up to the anthem. It's not living up to the Constitution. So he said he will not stand. His conscience will not let him stand. And he said he cannot honor that. Which he has the right to do. And I completely and wholeheartedly agree with him. Where there is corruption, we need to speak out. Plainly. And you don't have to be one that have experienced it. I disagree with something that's going on. Um with um what's going on with the Native American. If they're being wronged, they need justice. Any group, if you are being treated unfairly. And the truth is on your side. I'm with you. I'm for you. Because if we're going to be we the people. If we're going to be a so-called United States. Everybody supposed to be treated fairly and equally. But if we could just be honest. We know everybody is not treated equally or fairly here in the United States. We know this as a fact. And still, we had like the people that are oppressed to speak out against it are unpatriotic. The nerve of them to speak out against their oppression. The nerve of them to point fingers to their oppressor. That is literally crazy. You know, it's like a, a rapist being in shock. That the person he rapes points him out and rats him out as a rapist. It's crazy. And I know if you would just take the time to think on what I just said, you will you will agree if you have common sense, if you have a conscience. That that don't make any sense for someone who have done a wrong to someone, and that person finally can't take it anymore and speak out and call you out on it. Don't make any sense. So I'm just going to let you know right now, in case you didn't know. I support the brother 100 percent. It don't have nothing to do with him being black. Because if a because uh, if a um, if a Caucasian player did it and stated his reasons for doing it, I will support him 100 percent, too, simply because it's right. It has nothing to do with his his um, color of his skin. It's because what he is protesting is right. It's right. So for all you people that say your flag did so much for you, that this country did so much for you, that piece of cloth, this landmass did not do anything for you. Let's just be honest. Just be brutally honest. The people in this country may have opened doors and done things for you. But this landmass didn't do anything for you. That cloth with the red, white, and blue with the stars on it did not do anything for you personally. So start so stop acting like that flag um like got you a job. 
Like you sitting in there about to get an interview and sitting next to you is the American flag encouraging you that you can make it. That flag didn't do that to you. So let's just be honest. That flag is being mass produced daily. They might take the day off today or whatever, but we got plenty of flags in place. So if somebody took a flag and burned it, that flag would be replaced. I'm not shedding a tear over that piece of cloth. We got people literally being murdered. And people want to cry over a piece of cloth, but will not cry about somebody that got gunned down that was un armed. They're more emotional about a flag, about a piece of cloth than somebody that is flesh and blood. Now I know police have a hard job and I know that they go against some people that are hardened criminals and they do have the right to protect themselves. But I am talking about police brutality. I am talking about the murder of unarmed people or even people that are armed, but they don't even they they, they still don't oppose the threat. You got to understand, being armed don't mean you you oppose a threat. Because if I have a gun in my pocket and my hands are up and you shoot me, you cannot be like, well, he had a weapon. We got to stop the madness. We got to stop the madness because I pose no immediate threat. So there was no reason to shoot me. And we done seen many cases where they say, well, he had a gun. These are in some states where they have a right to carry. But for some reason, if a black man carries a gun, well, he had a weapon. He's in a state where he could carry one. So how is it still an issue when a black man has the license, has the proper paperwork, has the weapon holstered the way it's supposed to, yet for some reason, I had to shoot him. I had to shoot him. He had a gun. He was nowhere near his gun. His gun was under his seat, but I had to shoot him because we found out he had a gun. That's the type of stuff we're talking about. That's the type of stuff that this young man, um, Colin Kaepernick, is talking about. That's the injustices we are talking about. Now, if someone pull a gun on you and you're an officer and y'all shooting back and forth at one another, somebody pull a gun on you, of course you have the right to defend yourselves. I'm not talking about that. I am talking about the many accounts of shooting someone that posed no threat, shooting someone that is unarmed, that is what I am talking about. The, um, the use of excessive force, that is what I am talking about. When it is not merited, that is what I am talking about. So no, I am not talking about all police officers, so please Understand the words that are coming out of my mouth. I am talking about police officers that are no good and not fit to wear the uniform. I am talking about police officers that have a rap sheet themselves a mile long of 30 complaints or more. And I'm just saying you don't need that many complaints to be to me. I believe you, something need to be done about you. But there are some officers out there when they dig into the rap record after they do something off um off the chart and get tele and, and it get filmed and then we find out they had 36 complaints or more for excessive force and they still have a job it's amazing because in the real world it's point system some jobs if you get three write-ups you're done but for some reason being a police officer you could have 50 complaints. The most I ever heard actually somebody had 50 complaints on one officer and this officer still, still had a job but then he finally ended up shooting somebody and killing them. Then they gave him a desk job. And then if he didn't get the desk job, he gets as people call it the paid vacation. The paid leave as they're doing an investigation. And you wonder why people are outraged. See, it's called because really most people don't want to hear 
the complaints of others. It's an inconvenience for them to hear the complaints of others. Um, it, they take it like we, we rob them of their, their precious oxygen. If they could just be have enough uh, compassion to listen sincerely to the complaint of others that are experiencing something that you you have been fortunate not to experience. Just because I haven't experienced a thing, does it make it not so? And I have friends that think because they haven't seen it or experienced it, the other person's lying that say they have experienced it. That is crazy. It's crazy. So yes, hear each other out. Yes, have some common decency, some common respect to let the other person tell their story, to let the other person vent and give them a fair sh shape, give them the time to express what makes them uncomfortable, that makes them dissatisfied with the dealings and the rulings that go on in our country. It's our First Amendment rights. But it's so weird. All these patriotic people are so angry that another patriot did something within his right to do as a citizen. Now, we have the right to disagree with somebody's protest. But just because I disagree with you, trust me, I'm not calling for your death. I'm not calling for you to be fired. I'm not having a meeting with you as some of the owners in the NFL have said about this young man. He need to be cut loose and I will never give him a chance to work in the NFL again because he's an Amer American citizen exercising his rights as an American citizen that the military fought and died for for you to have. I told somebody I feel it's more of an insult that as a veteran coming back home missing limbs, I'm going out here fighting for your rights and then come back to the states and nobody's protesting nothing that's going on within the government. And we fought and died for you to do such. But you you, you complain in secret, but you won't do anything about it to, um, to let the people know how you truly feel and for it to get into the right ears or to let somebody hear it they might know someone that could do something about it. That might also offend and might be very disrespectful to those veterans that served for your right to protest, but you want to sit back and not do it. But that person done lost a leg for you to have that right, but you rather just complain and silent and like everything's good when you know it's not good. Picture if Dr. King had the attitude that some of you have. Oh, we just we just need to talk about love and peace because Dr. Martin Luther King was a man of peace. Dr. Martin Luther King, some of you may not know this, at some of his headquarters had weapons. But what he wanted was to have the right to have peaceful, a peaceful demonstration, a, a, a peaceful gathering of people protesting. That is what he wanted. But his um his messages and his speeches was full of him confronting and calling out what was wrong with America. He talked about racism. He talked about inequality. He talked about lack of laws and protection for um, African Americans. He talked, uh, as I said before, police brutality. People dying innocent. Um, people being murdered by the police officer. Systematic racism. That is what he talked about. He didn't operate in as what some people call it. But listen to what um, Morgan Freeman said. He said that we just stopped talking about Racism. If we just stop using terms like black and white, there'd be no problem. Come on, for real. Before the term black and white was ever used, 
we still have problems in this country. So that that theory has already been tested and has already shown to be very flawed. So it's not the terminology. Now terminology suck when you say the wrong things. But I can say all the right things, but if I have a corrupt heart, I most likely will do corrupt things and still use very polite words. So it's not really about the language, but using right language will help. Using right terms, you know, might could lessen things. But I could be a racist and never once use racial terminology. It's just using my power in a way to keep you from ever having a piece of the American pie. I don't have to use race, um, racist terminology to be a racist. I just have to do everything in my power to keep you from not experiencing the so-called American dream. So let's not fool ourselves. Let's not fool ourselves. So for those of you that care more about a flag who care more about a national anthem but not the people of flesh and blood all I can say is wow that is wow wow that's a wow moment because as I said before and I'm not trying to be disrespectful I am just being honest that flag is cloth It's cloth. And if somebody shot it with a gun, it would not bleed. It would not bleed. So my heart is more um, drawn to, my heart goes out more to the stories of oppressed people than that piece of cloth. People talk about this country did this for you. This country did that for you. This landmass literally did nothing for me. Once again, it's the people that is tied to this landmass that I fought for. I did not, I did not fight for this landmass. Everything is about the people. People talk about, oh, slaves back then fought under that flag. This is my opinion. I could be wrong, but this is my opinion. I believe them men that had the promise of freedom, staying free, fought for just that, for the right, for the rights to remain free and to be free and to experience all these so-called rights and promises that the other man was experiencing. They did not fight for the flag. They did not fight for the landmass, so to speak. They fought for their right to live anywhere upon the land and to experience rights, rights due to them as a man. But trust me, if somebody was sitting in a room and somebody had a gun to their head and they had a lighter about to light the American flag and they said you have a choice either we shoot you in the head or we will light the American flag I'm just gonna let you know right now light that, light that flag up because it's not flesh and blood I am going to live. That that flag will burn. Some people say, well, you're not very patriotic. If that's what I got to be to show you how patriotic I am, I am. I'm not very patriotic. I'm not. I'm sorry. That flag will not supersede someone of flesh and blood, period. A person. <laughs> it will not 
supersede a person, a song, a poem will not supersede flesh and blood. So you can label me not very patriotic. You can say I'm the I was the I'm the worst veteran ever. You can. You can say that if you want to. You have the right to. But we we disagree. And I could disagree with you and still remain a friend with you. But if you can't handle that, then thank you for the memories that we did have as friends. But if it must come to a close, I will treasure the season that we did have together. But if you feel that your conscience will not allow you to remain friends with me, by all means, follow your conscience. Follow it. Because you have to live with yourself and the decisions that you make. Colin Kaepernick said his conscience would not allow him to do it. And through his stand, it had actually made people take people look at themselves, see themselves and see others and see how far their conscience will allow them to do things. So this is your brother, your friend. <laughs> Some of you might say I'm your adversary. My uh, El Binya, also known as Tommy Kurt Todd. My legal name is Kirksey Todd. And I just wanted to make this video to share my thoughts on this. For some of you who have never heard the voice and seen the, the face clearly and match it all up to all the things that I have said on social media or whatever, now you get to see the man himself. So anyway, Shalom, love, and blessings. Till next time.